Thank you. Our next speaker will be Mike Devet. She is with Aqua for All, the Sports for Vehicle for Hygiene Education. Sure. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. I would start. I would like to start with a video um, to give you an idea about the program Football for Water that we run for the past eight years. From there, I will take on the presentation. Can you see this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> The gentleman football for water. I point the ragik mangen kaka, ritoler togidak and gimma maler. Football for water is very unique. Instead of only building latrines, they also train as teachers to use football in teaching children about sanitation and hygiene. When we kick the ball, we think of disposing the waste and washing hands correctly. This combination of football and water works very well because the life skills training in the classroom can be very boring. But when you go out and practice, the children become active and learn better. Tinde alogo kasi wuki chon kech world coach mar school waka osi punjoa. Apu nyo jo nyuon na tadinye tendo aber mar logo ma ber. Tinde mama na logo ma ler kapoko tedo tadi kase aicho. Through the program, we teach boys and girls that menstruation is normal. Nowadays, these girls take leads in school because they don't have to miss classes the way they used to do. With its fun approach, the children like coming to school, staying to school, and also improving on their performance. After the inception of football for water, there is a lot of positive changes. The absenteeism is going down because they don't get affected with these diseases like cholera. Girls are not sighing away because the facility is also there and the standard of the school is also gone up academically, so many pupils are joining the school. To make the project more sustainable, we set up this cyber cafe so that whatever income that we get from this cyber cafe, we use to maintain the sanitation facilities in the school. The program ensures that all facilities are in place, modern toilet, trained wall coaches, football pitch, and football equipment. Together, it can make a change in the life of these young people. Just a second, please. I would like to stop this video so that you can hear me. Um, I will share my presentation. Let me know if you can see it, please. Yes, we can see it. We would ask you for you to put it on presentation mode on the bottom yeah. of your page. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, this was a nice promotion video just to give you an idea about the program that we run. But I would like to talk about football based life skill education in general and the effects on behavior change, because during this program, we did a lot of researches on this. I mean, we can uh, first of all, like to uh, this program try to provide an answer on three main challenges you would find in washing schools. So this is the operational challenge. I think it's been addressed before uh, to get uh, enough finances uh, to sustain the facilities and to, to deal with fecal sludge. Uh, the second uh, challenge has been the fragmented governance in washing schools. And the third, I would like to focus on that today is the challenge to achieve and measure sustainable hygiene behavior. Um, this is an impact-driven uh, sector, and that means that the effect on health that we would like to achieve, they take time uh, to measure. Um, so what did we do? So we started eight years ago with no theory of change that strongly developed as it is presented here. But through the years, we developed a theory of change in which yeah, I, would, I, don't, uh, I don't want you to focus on the, on the text, but I would like to, to highlight that uh, if you look at the intermediate outcomes, actually only one or two boxes have to do with hardware. The rest have to do with institutional, financial, sustainability, behavior change, and so on. 
And so it's true, safe sanitation is not just building toilets, it's way more than that. Now, why do we need sustainable hygiene behavior? And we need that because we need 80% of a group to practice hygiene behavior to get the health impact we would like to uh, see. And why did we use sports or in this case, football? We know that uh, it brings uh, fun, fitness and discipline, but it, it accelerates actually motivation and memory retention. And it helps also these children to, to create habits, which we need to, to achieve the hygiene behavior in practice. And just like putting on a seatbelt in your car after a while, you don't think about it anymore. Now, this is what we would like to see when it comes to hygiene behavior. And the third point is school children, they can be acting out as, uh, uh, as game changers uh, into their communities, towards their families. Now, we did research this because it's a nice story, but now <laughs> we wanted to prove this. So we did several researches and I would like to present the findings very briefly here. Uh, so first of all, we saw that when it comes to hand washing and sanitation, football, uh, this was done, by the way, uh, um, compared to a control group, uh, a control group that received regular wash interventions. So what we did see is that these schools that had sports or football had, had significant, uh, significantly better access to these uh, facilities. Next to that, we saw a decrease in open defecation in these schools compared to the control group. We didn't see a lot of changes on water. So this is uh, something to, met, to take into account. The second uh, part of our program, which is an important part of our program, which is girl empowerment. Uh, we, did, we know that girls are sometimes not attending school due to menstruation. That we did see uh, a significant increase in girls' attendance. We did see uh, 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 the percentage of schools that eliminated absenteeism in total due to menstruation increased from 12 to 76% in Ghana. And in Kenya, uh, absenteeism in general decreased by 50% for girls. Menstrual hygiene management, uh, we did see statistically significant better access, use and understanding of these facilities in football for water schools. Now, community outreach. Uh, we saw a decreased report of vandalism and open defecation. And when I'm talking about vandalism, I'm talking about vandalism of the school facilities done by the community. And we did see access to hand washing and sanitation at home increase in the communities. Um, we also saw greater use of hand washing facilities at home and improved regularity in, in hand washing with soap amongst these parents. And parents were also more willing to improve their sanitation facilities at home. Now, behavior change, I think this is what it's all about. In the end, we did see that uh, these children that were asked uh, or reported uh, or that were interviewed in this uh, uh, study, that they were more likely to report learnings on hygiene, health, and cleanliness at the end line than compared to schools in the control group or children coming from these schools. And we observed positive uh, behavior in pupils that were part of Food Buffer Wash uh, on uh, the following indicators, which are better hyg hygiene, better confidence, uh, more ambition, and improved school performance, and of course, improved health. Now to go on to health, what did we test? We, we, we looked at reduction of diarrhea cases, which was statistically significant for uh, children participating in food puffle wash. And we saw reductions of cough, cold and influenza. Now this last uh, point is interesting uh, during the co uh, current COVID pandemic, because these are more airborne diseases. Eh? So they, uh, hygiene can also affect this. Now, Something that we did not yet anticipate at the beginning, but we would hope to see is that we, do, we saw an increase in official testing scores in Ghana, and this was significant. In Kenya, we did see uh, this increase as well, uh, unfortunately not significant. Um, so uh, yeah, it's important to realize because this would, would, would really uh, improve their chances in the future yeah, for boys and girls in these schools. Now, I would like to close off, maybe I'm going too fast even, but I practice to keep it short. Um, I think uh, what we found is that sports-based life school education is contributing to bridging this gap between hygiene education and behavior change. And um, uh, how we saw them outperform on health, hygiene, behavior, community outreach, menstrual hygiene management and attendance, motivation and performance. Now you see how many factors you need to be successful in washing school programs and not only uh, the construction of a toilet facility. And that's why I find it very interesting what we saw in the beginning, uh, although I didn't focus on it here, it's very important to, to build the correct toilets because if they are not clean and safe, people can actually better go into the bush. They will uh, run a uh, uh, less risk of get, catching a disease. So I just want to highlight that. But I want to close off with a final statement. Um, 
Yeah, to realize this health impact that we would like uh, to achieve is uh, we really need increased investment in this more enabling environment. Uh, so financial and institutional sustainability, but mostly hygiene, life education and sports. And it's um, uh, at this moment still for funders, investors, not sexy enough. That they would like to see hard beneficiary, hard uh, facilities. So my message to everybody would be, um, if you invest in this, you would get more sustainable results. And in the end, you'll get your money back. And of course, uh, um, uh, it requires a little bit of trust in this methodology. So I would li also like to ask the academic society to help us prove this research further. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Maiki.